Hi guys, so a lot of you guys have enjoyed my home cafe series and I've gotten a lot of requests to create some new videos. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some ideas on how to create your own Korean cafe at home. So first up we have the croffle and this is kind of a trendy Korean cafe item lately. I use these mini croissants from Trader Joe's and they actually taste really good if you just put them straight into the oven and eat them. But for this, we're going to let the croissants thaw out for about a couple of hours and then they're going to puff up a little bit like this. And you're also going to need a waffle iron to make this. I have this plug-in Belgian waffle iron that I've had for ages so I'm just gonna pop the croissant into the center of the waffle iron and then let it sit there. I usually let these sit for maybe three to five minutes but you'll have to keep checking on it and figure out how long it takes your waffle iron to cook your croissant and you want it to look really nice and brown and golden like this. The first time you make it, you'll want to check on it periodically to make sure that it doesn't burn or it's not undercooked. But once you figure out how your waffle iron works, you're pretty much set. So I'm going to show you guys another way to make this. I'm just taking some regular sugar and I'm going to roll my croissant in the sugar. And this is going to give the croissant a nice crispy sugary coating. And when we put it into our waffle iron, that sugar is going to caramelize along with the tons of butter that's in the croissant and it's going to be so delicious. The only downside to using the sugar is that it's going to take a little bit more work to clean your waffle iron because I find that when I just use the croissant alone, it's pretty easy to wipe down but then when you have the sugar, you want to use soap and especially with an electric iron like this, it can get kind of messy. But this is what it looks like with the sugar on. It doesn't look a whole lot different but it's going to taste a lot sweeter. So when you add the sugar, it kind of reminds me of those Kugin Amon pastries but this one is not quite as sweet as the Kugin Amon. And you can plate it and add some fresh fruit and I'm just adding a little sprig of thyme and some powdered sugar to make it look pretty. When I had this in the cafe, they served it with a little uh, pitcher of maple syrup or even honey or you can just eat it plain. I think it tastes fine plain as well. Next up, we're gonna make this sweet sugary garlic baguette, which I've seen at Korean cafes for maybe four or five dollars a bag, but this is so easy to make at home. You wanna start off by heating up your oven to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm just using a full baguette. I bought a brand new one just to make this video, but when I used to make this at home, I would use the old, hard, crusty, leftover baguette that my family didn't finish eating before it lost its freshness. So this is a recipe for a full baguette, but you can adjust it accordingly based on how much bread you have. So I'm using half a stick of butter, which is four tablespoons, and I'm just going to put it in the bowl and microwave it for about 30 seconds until it melts completely. Next, we're going to add about four tablespoons of sugar, and that's the big T for a tablespoon. And then you just want to mix it all up until it's well combined. The butter and the sugar will continue to separate, so you're going to have to keep stirring it as you're putting this mixture onto the bread. Next, we're going to mix in about one tablespoon of garlic powder. And for this, you want to make sure that you're using garlic powder and not garlic salt. Otherwise, it's going to be way too salty. So just blend in the garlic powder really nicely and then we're gonna spread this generously onto each slice of the baguette. So when I filmed this video it had been a while since I made this and I think I was being a little too stingy with the butter sugar garlic mixture. When you guys are spreading this onto your baguette you want to be really generous and make sure to spread it into every corner which is something that I neglected to do in this video. I wish I would have spread out the mixture a little bit more evenly and just covered every part of the surface of the bread. So I have a convection oven and I bake this for about 14 or 15 minutes but you want to keep checking on your bread to make sure it doesn't burn because everyone's oven is a little bit different but on average I would say about 10 to 15 minutes. This looks really simple, but it's really just so delicious and it's a great way to use up old bread. 
Next, I'm gonna show you guys how to make this apple citrus tea that I had at a kid's cafe, but it was actually really good. I'm gonna use my favorite halibong tea jam mixture, but you can use yuzu or citron tea, and if you guys don't have it, then I'll show you how to make your own. And you're gonna also need some apple tea. I just put mine into this Snoopy container, but it's this brand called Dilma Apple Tea, and I think this comes from Sri Lanka. I bought it on Amazon. I will link it in the description box if you guys are interested in getting it. So I just put in one tea bag and a couple spoonfuls of this halibong tea mixture and then you just add hot water. It is super easy to make and it kind of reminds me of a hot version of the Taiwanese fruit tea that I made in a previous video and this is just really good to drink during winter. It's so warm and cozy and it's so simple and easy to make. I like how the apple adds another layer of flavor on top of the halibong citrus tea and if you don't have this tea bag and if you don't want to go out and buy it, it's actually a black tea base so if you have a regular black tea bag, you can probably use that as well. So as promised, I'm going to show you guys how to make your own citron tea at home and I'm using some Meyer lemons. Meyer lemons are a little bit more fragrant than other lemons but if you can find yuzu, I recommend using yuzu or any citrus fruit will probably work just fine and it'll taste a little bit different depending on the fruit you use. First you want to cut it in half and try to remove as many seeds as you can and then you're gonna slice up the lemon into really thin slices and chances are there are gonna be some more seeds hiding inside of the lemon even though you you know already tried to remove as many as you could. I ended up cutting about two lemons up for this recipe and the trick is you want to use equal parts citrus fruit and equal parts sugar. So if you have 100 grams of lemon then you want to add 100 grams of sugar or other sweetener. And you can use regular sugar, brown sugar, honey, whatever you want. You can even mix it up and put in some honey and some sugar but try to keep the proportions about one to one as far as citrus versus sweeteners go. While honey is a more natural substance than sugar, I actually prefer just the sugar because honey has a really strong flavor that can tend to overpower the citrus. After you've mixed everything up, then you want to have some clean jars. I boil my jars in hot water first and then I'm just putting the sweet citrus mixture into the jars and I'm adding a little bit of the lemon juice and syrup in here. And then you want to leave this out of the refrigerator and let it sit at room temperature for about two or three days and then you can move it into the refrigerator. If you've properly sanitized your jar and everything's clean then this should last in the refrigerator for maybe one to two months but if you didn't properly sanitize your jar then you want to keep checking this to make sure it's not growing mold or anything like that. If you want you can actually start drinking this right away so you want to add about one tablespoonful of the citrus mixture into your cup and add hot water and you're good to go or if you want like I did previously you can add another fruity tea bag or some black tea to mix it up a little bit but it tastes great by itself next I'm going to show you guys how I make my matcha latte I have this matcha bowl that I got in Japan and then I'm going to add maybe one to two scoops of matcha powder. I use this brand called Encha that I bought on Amazon and before I mix it up, I'm going to run everything through a fine mesh strainer to make sure that there are no clumps of green tea. And then you're going to add about two to three tablespoons of hot water and then you will need a matcha whisk and I bought mine in Japan but this is also something that you can buy on Amazon and you're just gonna whisk up the matcha into the hot water and you're gonna use a zigzaggy motion to mix everything up and it's gonna get all bubbly and frothy and you can actually just drink the matcha straight up like this it can be a little bit bitter but I actually really like it this way if you have a whisk stand after you wash off your brush you can put it on here to let it dry and it helps the whisk to sort of retain its shape. 
then we're gonna add some milk into our cup. You can use either warm milk or cold milk, any kind of milk you like, oat milk, almond milk, regular milk, and you wanna fill up your glass about three quarters of the way. And then you're just gonna pour in the matcha mixture that you just made. And it has this nice gradation. And I think the milk really helps to soften the bitter flavor of the matcha. And you can add a sweetener if you like, or just drink it plain like this. And of course, I recommend getting a cute little bear cup like this to drink your matcha latte in. It just makes it all that much more enjoyable. Actually, if you have a cute cup like this, you can just use it to put any drink in and it'll make it feel extra special and festive. A lot of times when you go to Korean cafes and you order those sparkling drinks, they're basically just using fresh fruit, sparkling water, and maybe a sugar syrup. And you're paying like, I don't know, five or six dollars for the drink in the cafe when you can make something very similar at home. We're gonna start off with a slice of fresh fruit. And I'm just using a tangerine because that's what I have in season. But feel free to substitute this with anything that you have locally available, like an apple or sliced strawberries or even a pineapple would be really good. And I have my trusty bear mug again. I'm adding some ice and I'm gonna add the slice of fruit into my cup. I also had some blackberries on hand, so I added a blackberry. And lately I have been loving Spindrift sparkling water. This is not sponsored by Spindrift, but this is just what we had at home. We don't have regular sparkling water at the moment. And this is basically just sparkling water with a splash of fruit. There are no added sugars, so my husband and I really love drinking this. This has its own flavor because it has the mango puree and orange added to it. But if you're just using plain sparkling water, then you can add a splash of concentrated sugar syrup or you can add a little bit of fruit juice and make your own sparkling fruit drink. And this is very similar to what they serve in Korean cafes. However, in the Korean cafes, they probably use a lot more sugar and that's why it tastes so good. But if you make your own drink, you can control the level of sugar in it and you can just customize it to your liking. I just garnished my drink with a little sprig of rosemary and I'm going to enjoy this alongside my sweet garlic baguette. You can see this cup is super versatile and here I'm using it just for my regular old iced coffee. But if you guys are interested, I'm gonna show you how I make my pour over coffee. When it comes to good coffee, I think that having freshly ground beans is really important. So I will grind my beans every morning right before I make the coffee. I used to use this small hand grinder by Java Press, but my brother recently gave me a automatic grinder which I use now. And I will order my beans online from Blue Bottle Coffee. When I lived in Korea, I think I used to get most of my beans from Coffee Libre, but I try to find a roaster that roasts its own beans pretty regularly and I try to make sure that I use up the beans within about a month. So the system that I use to make my hand drip coffee is the Kalita Wave system. So I use this carafe and I also have this metal coffee strainer that my brother gifted to me a couple of Christmases ago. And you're also going to need some coffee filters and a scale. So first I usually wet my filter with hot water and let that water drain out so that my coffee doesn't have a paper taste to it. And then I'll dump out all of the excess water, and then I'm going to add my coffee grinds to the filter. I add 20 grams of coffee, and then I'm going to add a little bit of water to my coffee grounds. I will add about 60 grams of water, which is just enough to wet all of the coffee grounds and allow them to bloom and just rise up, and they'll start to bubble up. And then I'm gonna add 200 grams of water sort of in a circular motion like this. Supposedly, the circular motion helps to ensure that you have an even extraction of coffee. And after that, you're going to continue to pour in intervals of maybe 25 to 50 grams at a time until you reach 390 grams. I know that this sounds like a lot of work and it kind of is, but if you use fresh beans, it's really good coffee. And this is what you're paying for when you pay like $5 for a cup of pour over coffee at Blue Bottle. Just to make this pretty, I'm going to turn this into an iced coffee so that I can put it into my cute little bear cup. If you guys are interested in getting this, I highly recommend this cup. I got it off of Amazon and I'll link it in the description box below. 
I've listed as many products as I could in the description box below and keep in mind that these are affiliate links so I will earn a small commission if you purchase using my links but you don't have to do that. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Make sure to check out these two playlists right here for more home cafe videos. And as always, I want to give a big thank you and shout out to my Patreons and channel members. Thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. You are so amazing and you really help me to keep this channel up and running. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great week and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.